Well, good morning. And first of all, I want to thank all of you, including the media and press, for, for listening and being part of the solution to overcome this pandemic. Together, we will get through this, and we will be a better Virginia. The coronavirus situation continues to be fluid and fast changing. As of today, Virginia has 67 cases and unfortunately two deaths. Our strategy must focus on mitigating and slowing down the spread of this virus so that our medical system has more time to prepare for the increased pressure that this will put on it. We must flatten that curve, but to do that, everyone must use common sense. Every single one of us has a personal responsibility in this situation. Every one of us has a role in being part of the solution. For example, that means do not go to St. Patrick's Day parties tonight. If you do, you are literally putting others at risk. We will get through this, but everyone must use good sense and good judgment. Today, we are announcing the following things. First, Virginia will follow the federal guidelines regarding gatherings of 10 or more people. As a doctor, I understand that this virus spreads through human to human contact. Droplets from sneezes or coughing if people are too close or they can be left on objects like door handles and our cell phones. That's why it's so important that people stay away from close contact. Second, we strongly urge those age 65 and over to self-quarantine. Please protect yourselves. It is important that we make sure older Virginians in this situation can still get food, medicine, and other needs met. Our state agencies, our food banks, faith-based groups, and other nutrition-based organizations are working hard to coordinate food services. This may look different in different communities, but everyone who needs food assistance will be able to get it. I also urge everyone to make sure you check on that older neighbor or your parents or grandparents. Help people out with grocery deliveries. Make sure that they're okay. Again, we all have a responsibility to one another. We understand that the 10-person standard will have an impact on a number of businesses across our society. It means that all restaurants, malls, fitness centers, and theaters must significantly reduce their capacity in compliance with this 10-person standard or close. Restaurants are encouraged to continue takeout options. I understand that this affects people's livelihoods. We are taking the following actions to help our workers. Because Virginia and the federal government have declared states of emergency, unemployment funds are available through the Virginia Employment Commission to help mitigate the impact on employees of these businesses as well as on the businesses themselves. We have waived the one-week waiting period so workers can start receiving benefits right away. We know that rent and other bills won't wait. Affected workers and businesses can contact the Virginia Employment Commission for information on how to apply for help. Today, I am ordering that Virginia's 75 Department of Motor Vehicles offices close to the public. Online services will still be available and we encourage anyone who needs to renew their license or vehicle registration and can do it online to please do so. For those whose licenses or registrations expire May 15th, we will grant a 60-day extension. People need to do the right thing. Everyone has a role to help mitigate the spread of this disease, of this virus. That starts with social distancing. It is critical that we all think not of ourselves at this time, but of others. 
Young and healthy people may think this won't affect them, but I hope they will think of their parents and their grandparents. And I urge everyone to think of their neighbors, their communities. Public health relies on every individual making responsible decisions. We all have a responsibility to each other. We can and will get through this difficult time, but we must work together to do so. Now we will hear from Virginia Health Commissioner, Dr. Norm Oliver. Dr. Oliver, thank you. Thank you, Governor. As the Governor said, we currently have 67 cases of COVID-19 in the Commonwealth. Since yesterday, that's a additional seven new cases. And we are expecting results on about 48 other tests that are pending in our state lab right now. And there are tests that have been taken and are being run by LabCorp, Quest, and other private laboratories. So that number will increase. The Virginia Department of Health will be posting at noon each day the numbers that we have uh, in the morning. So that would be one way to check this. And in addition, of course, there will be these daily uh, news briefings by the governor. Among the cases uh, that uh, have occurred since yesterday is one case in a long-term care facility. And this is very concerning. This is our first case in a skilled nursing facility. And we are actively investigating this case, working in collaboration with this long-term care facility to isolate and make sure that the um, infection does not uh, spread to others. The breakdown of those cases, the 67 uh, uh, cases are um, nine in central region, 18 in eastern region, 38 in the northern region, four in northeast. We still have no cases yet in southwest. While the majority of uh, the non-travel related cases are cases that have been associated with other known cases, that is very local transmission, we have now begun to observe cases with no known exposure to a case which is what we would classify as community transmission or community spread. So the likelihood of community spread is, is definitely there. Some local transmission, such as in the Peninsula Health District, has resulted in clusters of illness, which reinforces the importance of what the governor has talked about uh, already, which is the social distancing. I, I would like to say also for those young folks who think that um, they're not affected by this, I want to underscore what the governor said about how social distancing on your part will protect our elderly. It's also important to know that although 80% of those who get uh, COVID-19 have mild disease, that statistic comes from looking at the pandemic in China. And everything that was listed as mild was everything other than the severe disease. So included in the mild category is some pretty bad pneumonia. I don't want you to think that you're just going to get a cold, okay? This is a serious, serious uh, pandemic, and social distancing is therefore something that we all uh, should do and take uh, seriously for ourselves, for our loved ones, and for the entire uh, community. We currently have a testing capacity of about 300 to 400 tests. Um, we have on order and we'll be receiving today um, more test uh, kits, which should nearly double uh, that amount of tests. Lo uh, private companies are online to help us with the testing. And many of you heard from the uh, federal government uh, plans to launch automated testing and drive through test sites around the country. Uh, the first wave of that will occur in those uh, areas that have been hardest hit, like Washington State and California, 
um, but Virginia is in that next phase that should get those tests from the uh, federal government. So we will be ramping up our testing capabilities in the days and weeks ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Howell. Well, in closing, I want to reiterate that it is everyone's responsibility to use common sense at this time. And I also want to repeat these basic health precautions. As we have said every day, please continue to wash your hands with soap and water. Cover your mouth and nose uh, if and when you sneeze. Stay at home. Let me repeat that. Stay at home if you feel sick and avoid touching your face. I thank you all again for being here. Uh, as I said at the opening of my comments, we will get through this together. Uh, we uh, live in the best state and the best country in the world, and uh, we intend to keep it that way. So uh, I'll be glad to take your all's questions. Henry. Yes. Yes. I, I think a lot of it, uh, Henry, depends on the capacity, uh, and certainly, you know, we have a limited number of, of tests available still. Uh, so I, I appreciate your question, and, and so individuals that will drive through uh, these uh, facilities will still be screened. Uh, they will be asked about recent travel. They will be asked about contacts. They will be asked about their symptoms. Do they have a high fever? Do they have a cough? Do they have shortness of breath? And if they meet the screening criteria, then they will be tested. Uh, if they don't, then, then they won't, again, just because we don't have the number of tests. But I would reiterate what Dr. Oliver said, each day is getting better. Um, and, and as you heard uh, last night or yesterday evening from our, our president, uh, we intend in the next week to have a million tests uh, in the country. So, so every day is better, uh, but we still don't have as many as we need. So, that, so I, I want people to understand it's not just everybody drive up and get tested. There still will be a screening process. Yes. Uh, thank you for the question. We are directing uh, everybody uh, across the, st uh, the state for consistency to abide by the 10 rule. Uh, we want, if there's a gathering of 10, and more, 10 or more people in a combined space, we are directing for that not to happen. So I, I would appreciate everybody, again, it's everybody's responsibility, and I, w I would appreciate everybody following these guidelines. Yes, well, it, your, your first question, how do we enforce? And, and we are working closely, Greg, with our Attorney General. I was just on the phone with him about 15 minutes ago. Uh, we were working with our legal counsel. We'll also be working with our, our Commissioner of Health uh, through the day uh, and, and talking about ways to enforce these. I would, though, emphasize um, I'm much more about carrots than I am sticks. And the reason I'm here today is to ask Virginia uh, to ask Virginians to, to be part of the solution, and, and hopefully we won't get to the point where we have to do a lot of enforcement. We, we will have that in place uh, if needed. Your well, second part of the Yes. We are uh, uh, wanting all of our, our restaurants to abide by the 10 rule. Um, obviously, that uh, a lot of restaurants will, will have more than 10 people in them. That's just the way they, they operate. Uh, and if that's the case, uh, we're not mandating that they close, but we're mandating or suggesting or encouraging uh, that they use uh, um, uh, takeout ordering so that people won't be inside of the, the confined space. Yes? Governor, Ben Van Ostrand with you. Yes. How will the state ensure that there's no backlog of service orders through the DMV? And what's the guidance for the DMV and for your supervisor of staff? Yes. Well, uh, again, I, I can't guarantee you that there will be no backlog, but we are working very closely, and, and I, I hope that that information will, will be out to the, the general public. Uh, again, we're just doing everything that we can to keep uh, large numbers of people being in confined spaces, and, and we have online capability, and, and for all those services that can be done online, that's what we're encouraging to be done. And any guidelines that you follow for those DMV employees? Well, the, the DMV employees, uh, We'll be, we're looking, as I've said, each day at, at teleworking uh, opportunities. 
Um, and so if they're not essential to be in the office, uh, we are encouraging them to stay at home. Yes. Yes. I'm going to let our, our Secretary of Health uh, address that. Sure. Thing. Thank you, Governor. We are working together, the uh, unified command in support of the Governor, uh, with the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association to understand exactly how many beds we can uh, push into service. There are most hospital footprints have. Uh, rooms that were uh, that they don't actually operate the number of licensed bed for example and obviously the need will will drive uh, uh, waivers on licensure and making sure we have the high standards but understand treating patients is our most important priority so we are again studying what this is going to look like in Virginia um, and working with our private partners to see how each one whether it's VCU healthcare or Centera or Centra how each one can expand their capability, how they can convert, for example, operating rooms that have ventilators into care areas when they cancel elective surgery, should that be required. So we are looking at what our surge capacity is with existing structures and also how that might be augmented with help from uh, federal sources, the National Guard and the like, to also put uh, services in place outside of the current footprint of our health system. We can get that, we can get that to you. I know the team does and we are working that uh, uh, on an hourly basis. So we can get back to you. Well, the first question is, where are we in terms of personal protective equipment around masks or uh, gowns and gloves? And I will say that we have uh, Commissioner Oliver early on uh, put a order into the national uh, 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 stockpile, and uh, every state did that, frankly. We did receive a portion of what we had ordered, and we are continuing to monitor that on a day-by-day on -day basis. But our priority is to make sure that our Hospitals uh, have what they need, but also it's our urgent care centers where we're doing testing and the like. So uh, we are actually monitoring that uh, as part of our uh, response on a on a day by day basis, and we're trying to one get as many uh, resources as we can from the national uh, availability, and also we've encouraged our federal uh, partners to encourage manufacture and distribution. So we are monitoring that uh, along with the Virginia Hospital and Healthcare Association, along with Medical Society of Virginia, to see where we can move products around. But there definitely is a shortage, and we're not getting everything we're asking for. The ventilators, we, uh, we are monitoring the number of ventilators that we have, and we'll get back with the exact number um, uh, later today. Yes, um, I will let Dr. Oliver handle your second question, but the first question, are, are there uh, a number of tests uh, in the future that would be acceptable? And, you know, I, I think that we continue to need to be able to test people that are, are symptomatic or at, at risk. Um, I don't see a need for, for people such as myself uh, who feel fine. Uh, not everybody needs to go out and get a test. So, um, and, and, and granted, uh, we've got eight and a half billion, excuse me, eight and a half million uh, Virginians, uh, and if we said, well, everybody just come on in and, and have a test done, that that's you know not not acceptable. So, so we are working to to be at a uh, a level a, a number that we feel comfortable that we can make accurate diagnoses and then provide the treatment. That, uh, it just it it changes every day, and it, it it certainly depends on you know the as as everybody knows the curve. Um, and, and just to reiterate, we're doing everything that we can. That's why all of these things are taking place so that we can flatten that curve and, and lessen the, the need for capacity in our hospitals. Uh, 
the numbers of uh, the second question you asked was whether or not the uh, tests that are being done in private labs uh, and the results of those tests are known uh, to VDH. We've worked out agreements with LabCorp and Quest to uh, receive reports on uh, their testing, and um, we do include those numbers um, in, in our reporting. You know, Henry, I, I would answer your question. Uh, you see a, a number of people behind me. There are also a lot of uh, people uh, that are working behind the scenes. Um, I'm very proud of our response in, in Virginia. Um, we are doing everything that we can uh, to make sure that all Virginians are, are safe, uh, to make sure that all Virginians have accurate and updated information. And so. Uh, we strive for perfection, Henry. I, I don't think it's uh, realistic to say that we always meet perfection, uh, but I'm, I'm proud of our team in Virginia. They're doing great work. And I, I want Virginians to understand how hard individuals are working to, to keep them safe and to get past this. And as I said, uh, you know, Virginia will be stronger uh, when we come out of this, and, and the sooner the better. I don't think that we'll change uh, from where we are today. I mean, there's always that possibility, but you know, I, I, I'm going to use a number that, uh, that I learned of yesterday. Over 45% of Virginians uh, get their meals in restaurants. And so I, you know, I think we've got to be uh, very careful, very prudent. Again, we want to keep Virginia healthy, but we also know that they need to eat. They need to have adequate nutrition. And so uh, we're going to stick uh, by our policy uh, that I just outlined, uh, that we're encouraging, uh, directing uh, 10 or less people to be in a combined space. And uh, in the meantime, if, if uh, people exceed that, if restaurants exceed that, then uh, they will use carry out uh, to, to provide nutrition to individuals. Yes, and that, again, that goes back to the announcement from the Employment Commission that if, if individuals are out of work because of, uh, you know, what we're mandating, then uh, unemployment benefits will be allowed for, to them. All right, we got to head out. Thank you. Thank you all so much again for being here. Thank you all.